In this video, let's see how we can make use of JSON RPC instead of WebSockets to get the same results as we got in our previous video. If you have not already watched the previous video, please do that before continuing with this video. Some of the platforms like Google Apps Script do not support bi-directional connection that is WebSockets and you might even have some use cases wherein you don't require WebSockets. In such a case, JSON RPC is a good choice. So to make a JSON RPC request, send an HTTP POST request to the root path. If you have been working with REST APIs, you might be thinking of different endpoints, but JSON RPC doesn't work like that. You have to send POST request to the root path on the port and IP where the Ripple D server is listening for JSON RPC connection. So basically we are invoking the methods present on remote Ripple D server instead of having a bi-directional connection like WebSockets or different endpoints like in REST APIs. So this is the program we wrote in previous video. We will be reproducing the same using JSON RPC. So let's visit xrpl.org for some documentation. Visit this link and then references here. And under HTTP WebSockets API, go to public Ripple D methods. Because it's public, we can access it. So yesterday we saw account information. So this is where you can get all the information to access the account's information. You can check for different fields and values it takes. Also the description of each individual fields below it and then the response and the meaning that is description of each field and the possible errors. So at the very top of all these pages, which has public Ripple D methods, you can see different formats to access information, WebSockets, JSON RPC and command line. For command line to work, you must have Ripple D server running on your system, local system. So once it's running, you can just copy paste this syntax and it will fetch the account information. You can find all the commands in respective pages of public Ripple D methods. But in this video, we are going to concentrate on JSON RPC. So let's get back to our Visual Studio Code Editor and see how we can make use of JSON RPC and fetch information from remote Ripple D server. Instead of messing with this file, let me create another file and call it client.ts and let's use Axios. This works even with the native fetch method, but most people prefer to use Axios. So I thought we shall just use the Axios and see how to work with JSON RPC. I have already installed the package. You can just do npm install Axios. And once it's done, let's import Axios. Now, as an assignment, you can do the same thing using native fetch method, okay? So I'll write a function called main, let it be asynchronous. Because we are invoking methods present on a remote server, usually it returns a promise. So we will be using asynchronous method. And I prefer to use async await keyword instead of dot than stuffs. It looks cleaner for me. You use what you prefer, anything works. So let's use Axios. Well, there are two methods here. You can just use Axios with dot post or else you can directly pass an object that is configuration object to this Axios. I'll show you both the ways. So let me use await keyword. By the way, as I said, you can even use dot then. It's just personal preference. I like to use async await Okay. So now the important part. So it takes a field called method. It has to be post method and not get. And obviously URL, the server's URL, it has to point to the root and not to any other endpoints. And in any ideal programming world, you should not be hard coding your URLs directly into the program. Instead, you should have that information in a separate file, import it wherever you need it, 
and use the variables as values for these fields. That way, whenever there is a need to switch between servers or from mainnet to testnet or from testnet to mainnet, you change the URL at one place and it reflects throughout your application instead of you digging each files and looking for these URLs and changing it, okay? But for demo purpose and to have everything on a single screen, I will hard code it here. So let me input ripples mainnet server information here s1.ripple.com with a port of 51234 and let's even pass the header remember it's an object by the way because you can send multiple headers you must send it as a, as an object here we are just using content type which is application JSON and then the main part which is the data it's a payload by the way so for this we can always refer the documentation and use the methods that is the fields we need for this we can for this which is account information method we can use this entire thing of course you can know the description information about individual fields we have already seen most of it in our previous video oh did that confuse you <laughs> usually when i watch videos online when people copy paste i get confused sometimes so let me remove everything and copy everything from here and remove this and pass it as a value to this data field so the method is account info you can also optionally use id because we are invoking methods on a remote server if you have an id the response will also include this id that way even if the response arrives out of order you know which request prompted which response so i think id field is important so this is account information method on the server and the parameters which accounts information you want let's take this from the user as parameter so process dot argv of two and strict means it only takes public key or r address and not the secret so let me write the node.js thing here to check if the user entered the correct command if not let us show a message of usage of this script that is the node and then the file name and then the r address remember the file name is client oops process.argv we have to check check for the number of parameters passed so argv.length okay hope that fixes let's execute and see if it works i'm not explaining individual fields here because we have done that in our previous video already and you can check the details of individual fields in the docs by the way but this address is activated only on testnet but this url is for mainnet so i'll copy my another r address which is already active on the mainnet so let me use that R address to fetch the account information. So it spits bunch of results, which we hardly understand, but what we need is present inside this data field. So let's destructure it. That is only get the value of the fields we require. Now, this is the output we were looking for. And this is what we got in our previous video tutorial using web sockets okay so as i promised before i'll show you another method quickly that is using axios.post method instead of this configuration methods uh, this takes the server url as its first parameter so i'll simply copy this from here and maybe remove this we can just copy paste it from the documentation so i'll paste this and the second argument is the object 
let's fix this first axios.post and let's visit the documentation and simply copy this and let me remove this and then paste the thing we copied that's it we can just remove this and make sure we get this input from the user from the command prompt that's it let's execute the script and we get the same result so this is how you make use of axios.post and then axios by using the configuration object so this is how you access the methods present on a remote ripple d server using json rpc and you can find the syntax on all the methods uh, this public ripple d has okay you can check all the other public ripple d methods on xrpl.org to learn more about this